Hey CAC, it's time for another PT Unscripted. Uh, good to be seen. It's been a while. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, I want to share with you an experience I had here in my office in this place where I'm standing uh, a couple nights ago. And it was quite an event, quite an experience. I tried to capture it in words. And uh, so I want to I want to share with you tonight. Uh, I've entitled it Goodbye, O Sacred Place. Uh, this really isn't a PT unscripted. It's a PT scripted uh, because I'm going to read uh, words that I tried to capture my experience with. Uh, I guess it was on Monday night. So I was here packing up my library, packing up books, sorting books. My office felt like a living space, definitely a sacred space. It was like the room came alive. I heard voices. It began to speak to me. Books full of words lining the shelves talked to me. All the wisdom, knowledge, inspiration, how-tos they had passed on to me. They, the tools of my trade, my friends, my close friends, my wise guys, Beekner, Lewis, Merton, Peterson, Underhill, Von Hugel, Scott, Bonhoeffer, Bart, Benson, my wise guys. And they, the living and the dead, shaped my pastoral life and soul in this place. I love my books. And then a couch and two chairs, furniture, Sacred conversations were held on them for so, over 16 years. Hundreds of meetings and appointments took place on them. People bearing their souls to me in the presence of the living God. I listen. I ask questions. I listen some more. I speak and I listen some more. I remember the times we sat in silence without discovering an answer. We don't know what to do, O oh God, but our eyes are on you. I'm honored to have had a front row seat to God at work in many, many of your lives here in my sacred place. And then my desk and my chair, but on chair for like thousands of hours, listening to scripture, studying the Bible, discerning the voice or trying to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit, and of course, reading and rereading my wise guys, sermonizing, journaling, page after page of my journey with God and with you in these years, journals full of written prayers, hundreds of pages of written prayers, and this, the place of my ongoing, like three steps forward, two steps back, my ongoing uh, confirmation into the image and likeness of Christ. I thought by now I would be a lot longer, farther along than I am. And then the carpet. The carpet. I walked miles back and forth on its back, praying out loud. Prayers of praise to God in Christ for, for who he is and what he's doing and what he's done. And then prayers of thanksgiving, my heartfelt utterances to God for his gifts and his blessings. And always, always more to be thankful for. And then prayers of confession for my sins, my many sins, over and over again. God and only God knows my secrets, and he blankets them with his forgiving grace. And then my prayers of supplication, intercession, petition uh, for, for myself, for my family, for you, for West Africa, for our community, for our, our state, for our nation, for our world. Prayers without end because our needs and the needs of the world never end. Oh, thank you, Carpet, for supporting me 
in my prayer walks. And then these four walls, these four walls adorned with the holy relics of my life with God. A cross, Father Matthew Kelty of the Abbey Gethsemane took off the wall of his office one day and gave to me. A rough-hewn cross with the face of the crucified Christ wearing his crown of thorns, bought in Mexico just a few weeks before I crashed in November of 2000. And then a small plaque of Jesus carrying the lost sheep. The 99 were there. He went after the 100, the lost sheep, carrying the lost sheep on his shoulders, purchased in a gift shop outside the catacombs in Rome. And then one of my favorites, an icon of the crucifixion of Christ that I got in Assisi, the original before which St. Francis prayed and received his vision to rebuild the church. And then a painting bought on the streets of South Vietnam by my brother-in-law, which hung in his office and became mine after he died. These four walls created a chamber, a holy place, a sacred place, uh, my place of refuge from the storms of life, a room full of life and full of presence with a capital P. The other night, I packed up my books and belongings. And as I did that, I broke into tears, overwhelmed by both the blessing of this place and the finality of leaving this place. Deep tears of grief and anguish and loss and, and release. My burning bush never to be mine again. I pray it quickly becomes a new sacred space for the one to follow. Thanks be to God. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. I love you as always. Until next time. Bye-bye.